Welcome to a video presentation of Chapter 7, Section 2, Writing and Solving Proportions. We start with several definitions. The first one is the definition of a proportion. An equation stating that two ratios are equivalent. An equation stating that two ratios are equivalent. Scale model. A model of an object in which the dimensions are in proportion to the actual dimensions of the object. A model of an object in which the dimensions are in proportion to the actual dimensions of the object. And then finally, scale. In a scale drawing, the scale is the relationship between the drawing's dimensions and the actual dimension. In a scale drawing, the scale gives the relationship between the drawing's dimensions and the actual dimension. One more time from the top. Proportion. An equation stating that two ratios are equivalent. Scale model. A model of an object in which the dimensions are in proportion to the actual dimensions of the object. Scale. In a scale drawing, the scale gives the relationship between the drawing's dimensions and the actual dimensions. As you can see, there are quite a few story problems here. There's not necessarily so much work that goes with story problems. This is just this type of problem lends itself very well to starting off with stories. So don't panic just because there's a lot of story problems. Don't mean there's necessarily a lot of work that goes with all those story problems. All right, example one, solving a proportion. And we'll solve the proportions both ways using scale and cross products, but we're going to start with scale. An adult racing greyhound can run six miles on five cups of food. How far can they run on 12 and a half cups of food? An adult racing greyhound can run six miles on five cups of food. How far can they run on 12 and a half cups of food? All right, as you can see underneath that example, I've given you how to set up a proportion. You want to put all your facts from one set of information on the one side and all your facts from the other set of information on the other side. Now, which side, where, which facts go where doesn't really matter, okay, as long as you group them together. It's also important that all the same units are in the numerators and you've got all the same units in the denominator. You can't mix and match. You can't have inches up here, feet over here on the top, centimeters down here, and kilometers down here. You have to be consistent. You've got to have all the same units at the tops, all the same units at the bottoms, so or the numerators and denominators. All right, so first fact to it, six miles on five cups of food. Okay, so that I'm going to put on the left side. Six miles over five cups. Now, I could have very well chosen to write five cups over six miles. It doesn't matter. That's all your own choice. Okay. Now, other fact. We want to know how far can they run on 12 and a half cups of food. Based on what I wrote just a minute ago, that means that 12 and a half cups in my other uh, proportion, or the other side of the proportion, is going to have to go on the bottom. How do we know that? Well, I have cups down here. So cups is going to have to stay in the bottom. I can't mix and match. So that top right corner is going to be where I'm going to put my variable x. Now, you can use cross products. You can use scale. I'm going to use scale here. And the reason I'm going to use scale is because I can pretty easily figure out to go from 5 to 
to 12 and a half, I have to multiply by 2.5. 5 times 2.5 is 12.5. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing on the top. Multiply by 2.5. And 6 times 2 and a half is going to give me 15. Sean Ferg to the office, please. The adult racing greyhound can run 15 miles on 12 and a half cups of food. Okay, example two. One more before we get to cross points. What? Um, how do you get to one? You just figure out how you multiply, what you multiply five by to get 12.5? If it was five and 15, you'd be um, multiplying by three, because five times three is 15. If it was five and 20, you'd be multiplying by four. Just whatever you're All right. As a general rule, a drinking glass should hold 1.25 ounces of liquid per inch tall. How much liquid should a four and a half inch tall glass hold? As a general rule, a drinking glass should hold 1.25 ounces of liquid per inch tall. How much liquid should a four and a half inch tall glass hold? All right, so we start off with the first sets of information here. That if it's 1.25 ounces, it should be an inch tall. So I'm gonna write 1.25 ounces over one inch. Okay. Now I wanna know about a four and a half inch tall glass. Again, units have to be consistent. As you can see, I've got inches on the bottom, so on the other side, it's going to have to stay on the bottom. Four and a half inches has got to go down here. So again, top right corner is our mystery, your variable, question mark, whatever you want to put there. So again, I can use scale here, because I can pretty easily figure out that to go from 1 to 4.5, I've just got to multiply by 4.5. 1 times 4.5 is 4.5. So I'm going to do the exact same thing on the top. Multiply by 4.5. And when I take 1.25 times 4.5, I get 5.625. That's at 5.625 ounces. Four and a half inch tall glass is going to hold 5.625 <laughs> ounces of liquid. Okay, now we get to start using cross products here. And cross products, in case you've forgotten, is when you multiply on the diagonal. Okay. And when we get into the actual homework, I don't care what you use. If you want to use scale like we do in one, two, or you want to use cross products like we'll do in three, four, and five, I don't care. Unless it says use one or the other, pick which one you like and use it. I don't care. I really don't. So scale made no sense to you, two. Cross product is going to be your ticket product. All right. So we've got 6 over C equals 54 over 99. 6 over C equals 54 over 99. Again, you just have to multiply together the diagonal. So we'll start with the one diagonal, where I've got 54 and C. So I multiply those together, 54 and C make 54C. Then I go for the other diagonal, 6 and 99. 6 and 99 makes 594. Now, as you can see, it's just a multiplication equation. So you've just got to solve it. You know you're going to do multiplication by dividing. So I just have to divide across by 54. That'll give me C equals 11. Okay. 